All right, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, John Conley. I'm the chief economist of uh, Geek, which is a layer one blockchain project. So let me first of all thank uh, Dr. Rex Lay uh, for, uh, uh, and uh, Peihan Chuan for inviting us. We really appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to you all. Um, so let me tell you about the problem we're trying to address. Uh, the globalized economy has companies that are trying to work together from different places, different languages, different data systems, uh, different business processes. Uh, mergers and acquisitions, uh, very hard to do enterprise data integration. Uh, uh, there's different uh, social traditions within the business communities as well. Um, trying to do these kinds of things to coordinate oneself is an increasingly difficult and actually a very important economic problem. Uh, so one can depend upon the Googles and the AWSs. Uh, but that's dangerous because they uh, tend to be monopolies and they also tend to be controlled uh, by certain governments and certain social views. So you're not sure uh, what's going to happen in the future. You'd much rather have an ability to do these things on your own, to trust yourselves as opposed to trusting somebody else. Uh, people also are concerned about the, the, uh, the centralization of their social interactions and their economic interactions uh, with these, these very small number of extremely large companies. So what we'd like to do is to create uh, a, a, a framework, a technological framework, where all of these things can be accomplished uh, without the need to trust uh, some central organization, and also with an ability to decide in yourself, on your own, how you want to do things and how you want to organize things. So we're trying to create this layer. And you know, as you know, fundamentally, blockchain is a source of consistency. Um, that how you use that source of consistency is an open question. There's many, many things you can do. Um, so Geek, we've, we've developed a lot of these sort of things. And in fact, on the, the Morpheus Labs platform, we intend to sort of extend these and develop applications that take advantage of this, this consistency layer. Um, the, foc the talk is only 15 minutes, so I'm going to focus on just a part of what we can do. And um, um, I'll try to come back to, uh, to some of these applications that, uh, that we can do um, uh, towards the end. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is payments, because we've been especially working on this in the last several months. Uh, so micropayments in particular. So first of all, what can we do with micropayments? Why should you even care about this? Because if I can't convince you these are important, then you shouldn't listen to me. So let me, let me show you why I believe that this is a really exciting thing that's going to open up a whole new economic layer to, uh, to, uh, to everybody. All right, so what can you do with micropayments? Well, a number of things. First of all, what is a micropayment? It's just a very small payment, a nickel, a quarter, a dime, a penny, even a fraction of a penny. All right, so it's not a very high amount of value. Um, we can make these small fixed payments. This would allow me, for example, to go to a site, buy a single newspaper article, uh, a medium piece, um, somebody's content. I could buy a stream a single song, uh, a YouTube video, a podcast perhaps. I could tip somebody who um, has generated a piece of content that I like or possibly done something that I want to endorse and encourage. I don't have to make the decision to pull my credit card out and pay $5. I can give a quarter you know, and done and done. So this will encourage, us, again, a whole new way of, of, uh, of interacting. I could also use this, extend this to a streaming payment. I could get access to a database or a financial reporting network. Uh, I could pay for social media content, uh, for, for search, uh, for content delivery, or really for any software as a service platform. Um, I can just pay by the minute, and I don't have to, uh, you know, to, to commit any larger than that. I could buy in-person services. I could have a language tutor from China, for example, and pay them by the minute for their, their work. Piano teacher from the Czech Republic, a medical doctor from, uh, from um, uh, Singapore. Or I could even go to a, have a plumber in America, and I could go under my sink and have my iPhone and look and say, here's the problem, and have him give me five minutes of his time and solve it without having to come out. So this is better for both of us. He gets to use his talents at a much broader, uh, much, much quicker, much more efficiently, and I get something I need very inexpensively. All right, so what this enables is something that we call the micro value, uh, the micro value stream. So right now, the only way you can get these services are, are two. They're, you can either subscribe to Hulu or something like that. You have to pay $10 a month, 
or you can provide microservices through ads. So I can look at these ads, and that's how I pay for the service. The problem is, I may not want to subscribe to the New York Times. I might just want one thing from them. So New York Times misses out on my patronage, and I miss out on their article. Um, uh, I may just um, uh, I, I get annoyed by ads, and ads is really a difficult, uh, a difficult problem for companies to balance. The more ads you put in, the less valuable your service, and that means the less people are willing to look at ads. So it's sort of a vicious circle. Um, if instead I could pay a few cents for something, everybody would benefit. We wouldn't have this, this friction that generates a loss of value. All right, so um, this micro value chain uh, enables uh, these very small gains from trade uh, to actually occur. Everybody benefits, and because they're small, they exist in the trillions. So it's a small number multiplied by an enormous number, and that's uh, an economy we simply don't have right now. So why don't we have it? Well, you're familiar with the financial services, uh, so you know these. I'm just going to be very brief here. First of all, costs a lot of money to use a credit card. You have to pay five, t a quarter for the, uh, for the transaction fee plus a percentage. ACH is similar. You have to worry about uh, KYC. You have to worry about authenticating uh, that somebody actually has the right to use the credit card or make the ACH uh, uh, payment. Uh, you have to worry about if you want doing international for an exchange settlement, uh, the regulations that might apply in that, uh, in that jurisdiction. Um, so, using these sort of conventional methods uh, really doesn't work uh, for smaller transactions and also for transactions that are between people that are unknown to each other and possibly uh, in, different, uh, in different countries and jurisdictions. Why hasn't conventional blockchain solved it? You're probably really familiar with crypto as well. Um, I've tried to use Ethereum. I do use Ethereum. But it's difficult, we have to admit. So all of this is doable, but it's harder probably than a credit card. You know, credit card, I just have to spend 10 seconds or 25 seconds filling in my data and then wait, you know, till it clears. So there's a lot of promise in blockchain payments, but the way that we approach it right now doesn't really solve it. So uh, what do we do? All right, so we have this technology we're trying to develop, which is micropayments. And the reason we can do this on GeekChain, I'm just going to sort of outline it uh, uh, sort of generally and not go into the details too much because of the time. Uh, first of all, GeekChain is a scalable solution. We can do about 1,000 transactions per second on a single instance of a Geek chain. Uh, we can have multiple instances. We're a multi-chain uh, multi environment. So 1,000 transactions a second is enough. We can have as many as you need. Uh, the cost of a transaction is on the scale of about a hundredth of a cent. So it's possible to spend a penny for a hundredth of a penny. Uh, it's also possible to do things like record uh, uh, telemetry from IoT devices, which you know can't be rescinded. Uh, we can uh, we can mediate. Uh, 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 distributed business processes. Uh, we can also do things like uh, enterprise data integration because all you really need is that source of consistency. You need to have knowledge that your Indian uh, 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 partner has certain stock or has certain things. So you don't really need insight into his entire database. You need elements of it. And if you can decide to have his database write things in the blockchain in a way that you can then ingest and understand, and inversely, you can keep your data systems and just use this as a source of consistency where you actually need to communicate. And again, that's possible only because it's a hundredth of a cent. If you had to pay $20 uh, to get a consistent record, you couldn't do it. And that's what it costs on Ethereum. All right, so we've developed this. Uh, we're calling this Geek Pay. We have micro coins and bearer tokens. Uh, we filed preliminary patent applications 2000, 2021. Uh, we're also looking at um, another thing to, to uh, interact with users called the high accessibility wallet, which I'll explain very briefly. So let me just sort of outline how this works at a high level. So at a high level, um, a user buys or somehow creates a bunch of micro coins. And these are, these are uh, uh, accounts, effectively, that are uh, in denominations of a penny, a nickel, a dime, or whatever the user chooses, something small in any event. Um, the way they're instantiated is in a text file. So there's a 56-bit uh, text file, sometimes smaller. 
And that text file is really all that's needed to exchange value with the merchant. So the user takes these, those text files are deposited in their high accessibility wallet. The user goes to a merchant site, merchant site has a geek pay button. Would you like to pay three cents for this video? Would you might like to make a donation of five cents for this to save this kitten, right? You say, yes, I would. And then a browser extension comes up and says, would you like me to transfer three cents to this merchant? You approve. The high accessibility wallet goes into your, your store of, uh, of microcoins, picks three of them, sends them out, HTTP, could send them out by text or email, any way at all. Uh, and the merchant has an API that ingests these coins, and the merchant has an automatic way of making the transaction that deposits the value to, the, to, uh, to his particular account. So what this means is that as a user, once I have the coins at least, all I have to do is say yes. I can do it, my mother can do it, my, my, my kid can do it, right? Maybe my dog can do it, I don't know. It's pretty smart. All right, so, um, but it's very easy and it's very low transactions cost for the individual. Not only is it a hundredth of a cent, it doesn't take me much effort, and that's what I'm really concerned about. So we're hoping that this is something that can extend the value and the use of blockchain payment solutions to the whole new sphere of the micro value chain. Okay, so it's critical in this sort of architectural design, that these coins, these, these are, which, which are instantiated in these text files, are not connected to any other wallet, not connected to a bank account, not connected to a geek account, not connected to anything. They're, they stand alone. And if they're stolen, at worst, the value of the coin is stolen. Uh, a cent, a nickel, whatever it happens to be. Uh, it's like change falling out of your pocket. Don't want it to happen but it's not a catastrophe, right? So if your software wallet is compromised, if somebody breaks into your laptop, not that big a deal. We don't have to worry about the security level. You don't endanger your account. You don't have to worry about magic words. Um, you know, you can choose a level of security that you want and you're still safe in the system. Now what we can't do is we can't really readily make these coins available to, uh, to people. Uh, you, it's possible, but the person would have to somehow uh, put himself onto an exchange, find a fiat rail, buy the tokens, have them delivered to his wallet. All of this is possible, but it's something that most people are not willing to do. It's a little bit difficult. So instead, we, th we see a partnership with uh, financial service institutions, um, banks, and so forth. We already see these established. You know, PayPal is, is trying to uh, provide crypto for its customers, and we see this as a value-added service for you. What we would imagine is that you uh, uh, deal with the customer that you know, you generate uh, coins out of his account, it's all an internal transaction, it's not ACH, it's not, it's not uh, a credit card, so there are no additional expenses to you. Any fees you might charge go directly to you. The merchant, on the other hand, probably doesn't want to hold Geek for the long term, so at the end of the day, he can deposit it back to you, you'd convert it into fiat for him, and the circle is complete, right? And again, any fees you might charge go directly to you. Uh, you don't have to worry about foreign exchange, you don't have to worry about um, unknown uh, customers, because everyone you're dealing with is somebody who is known to you, and you are complying with all the local regulations. Again, these are things that we have no ability to do. Right, so we see that this is something that, that really is a beneficial partnership to everybody. So um, I'm almost at the end, so I'm running out of time. Haven't had a chance to talk to you about machine-to-machine -machine markets, but you can imagine how those might be developed. Um, so what we're really looking for is a new way to let people interact, create value on a massive scale at a very small level. Right? And so this is the micro value chain, this is what our technology en en enables, and this is what I would like you to help us with. Thank you very much.